Hi, this is Eric from Cafe Watercolor. Thank you for joining me for another painting demo. Today, I'm going to paint a rainy Seattle street scenery from a sunny day photo reference. So I know it's been a while since my last video. During this time, I took a trip to Tokyo, Japan, and it's an amazing city. I took a lot of reference photo for me to do painting with later. And right after that, I did a move. So I moved from my apartment to a house. The apartment that we've been living in, they want to raise $300 per month for rent. So I saw that was kind of ridiculous. So we've been looking at houses to rent and we found a great house. They convert half of the garage into a studio space, which is perfect for me and my watercolor and also my production of video. So we immediately decided to move into this place. And on top of that, I launched my first online course. So by the time you watch this video, the course is already out. And you can check the description down below for more detail to sign up. So there's an early enrollment pricing that will end on October 9th. If you are interested, be sure to jump in as soon as possible because once the price go up, I'm not going to make any discount again because because I want to respect the people who buy early and I don't want to punish them for buying early. That is the pricing and the business model I've been learning. I want to let the people who purchase the core early on know that they got the best deal possible. So anyways, the move on top of the course launch makes my months very, very busy. And to make the matter worse, my new place, which I'm doing the recording right now, doesn't have an internet. So after I render the video, I have to go to a place with internet access to upload the video. So that makes things a little bit difficult as you can imagine. But here I am, I am back. I'm not completely finished moving yet. There's some loose stuff to pack up and move to the new place, but I'm ready to jump back in to make more new video for you. So regardless, I'm doing a sunny street or a raining one. I still have to do a drawing. And especially for a street scenery like this, I need to do at least some basic perspective drawing into it. Now doing the first wash, it is a raining street. So I'm going to change the blue sky into a cloudy one. So what I do is I wet the sky area sort of randomly with the side of my huge mop brush. So I get a mixture of wet and dry areas. And then I mix some uh, neutral gray, maybe a little bit cooler and just drop those paint in. Come back with some waters, just sort of play around with this so you get some nice variation of different values, hardish, soft edge, and they will become this sort of overcast cloudy day. And before it's dry, you just continue the wash down onto the street level. Watch out for the highlights that you want to preserve. So in this case, I want to leave some highlight. I just use a clean brush to soften that horizon line. So it feels like there's a misty distance in the background. And I'll continue to wash down with a darker gray. Now there's some stripe for the crosswalk and I just sort of randomly put that in. Putting some directional line with a damp brush. And now the first wash is dry. I can start to paint the building. So I start with the buildings on the left Try to get some quick, delicate details on that pole. I don't know what that is. I don't need to know what that is, but I do know that it makes very interesting details. So I just continue the wash down of the building. And it is important to connect the shape, especially for a raining scenery like this. You want things to be connected. So especially things in distance, you want to merge the shape together to give it more of an atmospheric feels to it. So I mentioned it before that most of my street sceneries are 
in one point perspective. I believe that we are looking at one point perspective most of the time in our daily life, actually, because most of the time we are looking at things straight on, which means when you're walking down the street, when you're driving, you're always looking ahead, and there's always a destination, a vanishing point. And the buildings on the back start to make it lighter, and just use some clean water to soften the edge. So it sort of just fades into the distance, covered by the mist. So I just purposefully skip around and leave a little bit of highlights on the left building, and those highlights are following the perspective into the vanishing point. So that sort of just leads your eye into it, and your mind will sort of just make the detail of those. They will try to read that and think of them as buildings, windows. Structure of the buildings, whatever that is, but it's just the background, so you're not going to spend a lot of time reading them. Bring some of those dark value down into the bus windshield. Giving some indication of value for the windshield of the car. Splatter some water on it. Give it some effect. Play with it while you can. And while the bottom is still wet, I quickly. Paint the buildings on the right. It's closer to us, so it's going to be a little bit darker. But I keeping it simple. Like there's a lot of windows on the buildings on the right, but I keep it simple, and I am just going to make it into one big shape. So darker as it comes down, and I connect all the shape and paint the awning. So during all my crazy moving, traveling, and launching the course, this YouTube channel has reached ten thousand subscribers. Is extremely humbling, and I can't believe there's so many people like what I do, and enjoy watching the video. So I really want to thank you for your support, all your comments, and all your following. And I'm hoping to bring more content to you after I move and after I have this great studio that I can work with. So I'm really going to make the most out of. This opportunity while I'm having the studio to make as much content for you as possible. So I spray some water on it to make the wash last a little bit longer, so I can play with it just a little bit more. Now I start to do the second layer of the windshield of the car, and as well as painting the body of the car. So I paint the hood of the car. I leave a little bit of highlight because the hood of the car is facing up, and there's a strong skylight on the top. Also paint the car in front of our main vehicle, but it will be a little bit looser because it's more in the distance.
and I just start to wet the surface so I can drop in the reflection of the car. So after several painting of raining street scenery, I sort of found out that the first wash for the reflection is never really dark enough. So I sort of learned to do that early on because after they are dry, they will be lightened significantly and I will have to do another layer of those if I want to make them really dark. So even though the car is on its first wash, it's actually a good time to put in some reflection already. So I start to add some colors to the bus. So the Seattle bus is made of green and yellow. So I need to make sure I paint that in. I also start to add some dark on the bottom of the bus. Those are the wheels and the shadows casting. But also those dark value will merge in with the reflections. Now as you can see, like I'm just referencing the photo that I'm painting from. Like the reflection, the cars, those I have to invent that myself. And that's the thing, if you understand what makes a rainy street scenery, what makes a car, you can pretty much just referencing from the photo that you took and you can change things around, you can change the time of day, you can change the lighting, you can change the composition. You have the freedom since you are the artist. But in order to change that, you need to understand how it works. So that go back to the core fundamental knowledge of lighting, surface material, and atmosphere. Now I'm just painting the figures on the right. Those figures are completely invented. As you can see, the, the figures on the left is wearing a short sleeve shirt, red, and he's looking at the phone and there's no umbrella so all this stuff I have to invent that myself but they are not really difficult to do as long as you know how to do it the only thing you really need to watch out is the proportion needs to be right they need to be at the right scale the height and how the gesture look so I'm darkening the right building again because these has to be a lot darker in order for the umbrella to pop out and the figure to pop out as well. So I decided to go over the right building again. Since that was completely dry, I can just glaze another layer on top. So as long as you wait for that wash to be completely dry, you can do a clean glaze on top and it will still look very clean. Just don't try to darken it and try to keep playing with it, especially when it is start to dry and you don't see any shine on the paper, but it's still wet. You can easily ruin that wash and to leave some really bad looking edges and muddy colors. So like I said, the reflection dries much lighter. So I start to re-wet those and drop in some dark value again and to make the reflection a little bit darker. Because it has to be quite dark. So when we put the reflection of the tail light, it actually shows up a lot better. So every time I do a wash for the reflection, I make sure to do the directional line again 
while it is still wet. So the directional line, what it does is it creates an illusion of tire track in the rainy day. And that looks pretty interesting. And visually, it leads your eyes into the painting, the vanishing point. So at this stage, the painting is pretty much there. So it's time to do some details. So in this case, I start to do the street light, some cables, some directional lines, whatever that is. Start to paint the shape of the stop sign and the writing on the sign. So it's time to give some darker stark under the bus. So just add some darkness under the bus, on the figures and places that needs just some extra punch to the value. So the street light on the left. Now I'm using a rigger and tr try to paint some electric wires cables in. Those make some interesting details and as well as connecting things to one another, lead your eyes into it. And those are very important too because most of the things in this painting are vertical. Now I use some orange and red gouache for the reflection of the tail light and white gouache for the reflection of the bus headlight. Now everything is dry, I decided to do a glaze on the left building. Just try to separate the building just a little bit. And as well as make the bottom of the building darker. And I do have to keep remember to soften the edge on the right because they are fading into the distance. I can make some stuff darker but the edge quality need to be the same. Okay, making the reflection on the windshield a little bit sharper and darker, a little bit more contrast. And make the reflection a little bit darker still. So at this stage, I pretty much just start to paint and look at my painting more, clean up that reflection of the bus, and there we have it. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, please like and comment. If you're new here, please subscribe. Be sure to check out my website at cafewatercolor.com. You can sign up for a free PDF guide. You can check out my course, Watercolor Essential, for fundamental drawing and basic watercolor. Thank you and I'll see you again soon.